I was hungry. I was so hungry. I believe every negative thing that you face in your life has a reason. My word is resilience. You only lose when you stop trying. Through my journey, I learned that, hey, I'm enough. It's a stage. It's a stage of life that people are creating. You know, Liz, I have a, a little issue with that part of self-appreciation. That is something that has two sides. If we're comparing what we looked like when we were 20 years old, I'm never going to be happy. Or if I'm going to compare myself to the 30-year-old or the 40-year-old in the restaurant. I'm very real, Liz. I show myself, I, I think maybe that is the secret. I can connect with people. How do you feel like the image that people see is different from how you're feeling? This is the Get Radical Show, brought to you by Radical Skin Care, with your sisters on a mission, Liz and Rachel Edlick. Our mission is to empower you to love the skin you're in, and we know how you feel on the inside is definitely coming out on the outside. Welcome to the Get Radical Show today, where we have Diana Mox, who's going to share with us her radical journey of how she went from being overweight, bullied, to an eating disorder and turned that into the fuel that made her one of the top fitness coaches and a chef, teaching us how to eat and love food with moderation. She's been coaching hundreds of thousands of people a day online, letting them see her fitness training and letting them live by a no excuses, no regret and quite a radical uh, chapter where she's turning the page and it wasn't always that way. when. We were talking early, you were sharing that the bullying and how you were feeling was a real challenge. So how did you use that stage in your life to bring you where you are today? And how do you think that fuels you encouraging others? I believe every say negative thing or adversity, mm -hmm. every adversity that you face in your life has a reason. And I always, since I was a kid, and nobody told me that, I used every adversity to my advantage. So the adversity that I grew up was in Colombia, single mother, uh, no education. I grew up by myself. My mother was working since I was four years old. Uh, my older sister, beautiful, so I grew up with a low self-esteem because she was the beautiful one. I was the ugly duck. So that makes you develop another skills. Mm. So I see every that is, everything that maybe look like is not on your advantage, it actually is. Because it helps you to develop another things. And in my case was, I was hungry. I was so hungry. I was trying to don't focus on my appearance because my love self-esteem, so I need to develop my character, my personality, my charism, and different more things, you know? And that helped me a lot. Now I understood, like, when you look back at your life, you, as Steve Jobs used to say, you start to put the dots together. So mm -hmm. everything now makes sense. And from, but from there, it was not like this at this time, right? I start to develop eating disorders because I was the fat one, your family call you the, the fat girl, the shabby, the, so you are not happy with the way you look mm. in the mirror. Were you eating too much? Were you bulimic? Were you anorexic? Was, Where I did you go? It's a lack of education. It's, it's nutrition. I come from my, if, you, if your mother doesn't know how you should feed your kids or how, what do you need to eat in order for you to perform better in your daily life, it's not, it's not her fault. And so that mm -hmm. I was having for lunch fast food. And it's, right. you know what I mean? It's, it's nation's no, killer. Yeah, and yeah. food affects everything. Not only the way you look like, it's the food affects the way you feel, you think, and you perform everything. So that is why, that is the reason my journey has been so long, because I need to re-educate myself. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have any mentor, any mentor or people to surround you with that uh -huh. could lift you up and say, hey, this way isn't working, let's try another way. Exactly, so you mm -hmm. need to learn it by yourself. Mm -hmm. that in the end, you realize that everyone is the mentor. 
I have the fortune to have one mentor, but I use everyone as a mentor. Ah, oh, that's that's Everybody really really good. Everybody has something to teach you. That's so true in their journey. Yeah. To learn from. So it's been this beautiful journey. As I said, I was overweight. I start to have eating disorders, but I always happy. I always I grew up under difficult circumstances. Colombia is not an easy country, and I'm from a middle poor family, single mother. So it's it was tough, but always happy. It's, there is always a reason to smile, and it's something that you, I think you're born with because it wasn't me. It's mm -hmm. always been a happy person. It was your shining light. Yeah. So that's, I'm sure, also helpful when you're trying to take, when you take adversity and you turn it into your strength. So you started to use things that you felt like were against you to make you stronger and develop basically get you toned up, right? You just put in the right words. Yeah, yeah. So, so then you actually migrated into being a chef and a personal fitness coach. So what is it that, when did it snap for you? When did you say, okay, I'm gonna actually change my body, change my eating, and now I wanna share this with the world? Liz, I don't have that moment. That is the difference in my journey. People ask me a lot that question. Mm -hmm. Like, when did you change your body? When did you, I, my journey wasn't like this. It was long. Like one day after many years, I look at the mirror and say, wow, I changed my body. When did this happen? Like when you start to realize people is asking you, they look at you like strange, but you don't realize how you look like because I was focusing on work, workout, work, work out, work, work out. That was my life when I was, I was married. So I didn't realize when my life changed. It was a, a transition, like it was many years. My, my, my fitness transformation, that is not only my appearance, but my, in, my inner being, was, my first of all, is endless, but it took me around 10 years. Like I started to working out and learn more about fitness and every food, nutrition at 21 and I, my competition, bikini competition was at 28. Okay. So it, it was a long journey. I love what you were saying and I think this is really important for those listening that, that people ask you about, like, when's that one moment that everything shifts for you? And in fact, it wasn't one moment. It was a commitment of many moments. It was a lot of little baby steps that all of a sudden took her down the path, committing to something and waking up one day and looking in the mirror and saying, wow, I actually like what I see. And it was just your radical commitment to doing whatever it took, being consistent, and it gave you results. Exactly. And I think if you look at so many areas in life, whether it's just your health, your fitness, your relationship, raising a child, uh, being great at your trade, whatever it is you're doing. It's really a journey of small steps, habits, changing your habits. That's a really good one because if your habits don't support where you wanna go, then that's where we gotta start. So what do you do and what do you coach people to do in changing habits that we mo know may not be serving us? like? eating the ice cream at 11 at night, or having the bag of chips when we're there on our computer, or feeling depressed and diving into, you know, the cookies, or whatever it might be. How do you develop new habits, especially if you don't maybe have a, an environment around you that supports that because everyone's eating the same way or doing the same thing? I start by replacing the habits with another habits. So say, for example, that you like Coke. So we're going to start to replace that Coke with Diet Coke for a few weeks. Then from Diet Coke, okay, you're going to start to drink lemon with water and a little bit of stevia. And the, the slowly start to replace the habit with another habit. And they're going to feel the difference. That's they're excellent. They're going to feel the difference. So it can be a, too drastically because it's impossible to change a habit that is been, you've been practicing for too long. So it's something smooth. One, two, and it's something that I learned in my journey. 
I never I enjoy the journey. You cannot live in order to get an outcome. The journey is the outcome. That is the real reward. You need, to, you need to put your heart, your passion, and your full being in everything you are doing or you are living or experiencing. Even if you don't understand the reason in that it's hard experience, sadness, at the moment, you may be say, why me or why I'm living this? You need to enjoy it as well and embrace it because it's happening for you, not to you, as you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, I believe everything, the root of everything is awareness. It's awareness. Self awareness, yeah. So you start to listen to your body when you are changing a little habit, like a soft drink, Coke, mm -hmm. drinking, what do you eat, sugar. We are addict. We all have addictions, and sugar is one of those addictions that are no like uh, they're like well accepted social addictions. Food eating, we eat, is uh, emotional eating. Those are addictions, and they're well accepted as well. Alcohol is legal, so it's just I believe is you need to tell the person what to do, but show the person what they are going to feel if they change those habits. That's a really, really good point. It's about how you're feeling. Before we go there, because I, I love that, because that's a massive motivator for people, like when they can remember a time that they felt really good, to go back to that feeling and use their pain or discomfort as leverage to get them there. Exactly. So the first thing that you talk about is replacing your habit with another habit. Mm -hmm. So migrating yourself out of what, from Coke to Diet Coke to maybe lemon water and stevia. So you're moving from one thing that you're dependent on and you're cycling it down to something that actually supports you and you get used to. Not trying to do everything at once where it's overwhelming. So replacing habits with habits. And then the second thing, on your journey to appreciate the journey for the journey. So be in that moment and appreciate it's all part of the journey as opposed to wanting to be at the end of the journey where we can't be yet because we're on that road and we don't know how close we are to the finish line. It's just the journey. So it's like how much are you loving the process you're in and the people that you surround yourself with in the process. And then the third thing you're talking about is self-awareness. Being aware of how you're feeling. And so that's something like comparing how you were feeling when you were overweight, you were feeling, you were being bullied, you said you had really low self-esteem to that step by step by step, you came out the other end, you looked in the mirror, and not only did you see the body that you had been working so hard for, but you also saw the light behind your own eyes of appreciation of how far you'd come. So how did that make you feel and how do you help people anchor that feeling in your coaching? You know, Liz, I have a, a little issue with that part of self-appreciation. That is something that has two sides. Because my mother was never a person who told you, well done, good job, you look beautiful. I never had that good positive feedback. So I didn't grow up with this. Nobody gave it to me. It's hard for me to give it to myself. So through my journey, I learned that, hey, I'm enough. I'm, I'm good just the way I am. Good job, Diana. It's, it's, it's enough. You, you, you need to do more. It's, you need to stay content with yourself. So this is something that I am still working on it, mm -hmm. to feel happy and proud of what I have done so far. But still, it still is a work on. A work yeah. in progress, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah a... You know, it's great that you brought that up. I was actually listening to, I know you listen to him too, and I just love him, Ed Milet. And I was listening to his podcast, which if you haven't heard it, you've got to, about, you know, the key to happiness. He said the number one key to happiness is not comparing yourself to another person. And it just steals your joy. And it's kind of like the process, if we're comparing what we looked like when we were 20 years old to where we are today at 56, which I am, 
it's like I'm never going to be happy. Or if I'm going to compare myself to the 30-year-old or the 40-year-old in the restaurant, I'm never going to be happy. Or the girl in the magazine or the girl on Instagram. And believe me, I do it all the time, that never enough thing. Trying to be more, work harder, be better. And that's not even to mention hormones. I mean, you know, for any of you out there that are listening to this and thinking, yeah, but I've tried the diet, I've tried the discipline, I've tried the workout, I'm with you. I've tried it all and I do it every day. I mean, I fall off the wagon every now and then and that is a fact. But it's really a helpless feeling when your hormones kick in or things that you feel like are beyond your control start to take effect. So if you start to judge yourself, as I do sometimes, um, many times, judge myself so harshly that I can see that I'm just stamping out that little light inside of me. And like you were saying, the same can be true. Comparison steals our joy. Unless you want to get somewhere you know you can be, and it's step by step enjoying the journey and using where you are that you don't want to be because you want to be better and you choose to be better, using that as leverage to get there. You know, using that as like, okay, I see how it feels when I am looking like this or feeling like this or eating like that or doing things that I know are taking me down the rabbit hole of unhappiness. And I know if I shift out of that, how it can feel when I'm feeling really great. And I know that I've followed my path to getting the radical success I want. I love you mentioned this because that is something provoke as well my eating disorder, especially in fitness industry, was never enough. I was super shredded, cut ups, but I was never enough fit, enough beautiful, was never, it was it's, it's sickness. And until you don't love yourself, unconditionally, without caring how do you look in your outside, you will never be happy. You will never be happy. Because you can look with six pack, you can be the most beautiful girl, but if you base your self-love in your appearance, you, it will be never be enough. Because it's always gonna be a more beautiful woman, a more fit person, she has bigger legs or more abs, or, and especially <laughs> in the fitness industry yeah, because exactly. I was suffering with this, so I start to throw it out. In oh, order you to, started yeah, to throw up. Those yeah. little things, and they are not conscious. Nobody's there for mm. you to tell you. That is why self-awareness is so imperative. Yeah, and I'm sure you weren't telling people you were doing it either, right? No. So you would hide it. You're trying to keep up with the with what appearance. You, exactly. And especially nowadays with social media and all this that, I mean, some people can see the difference between social media before and after, but our youngest generation, they don't. So that is when we need good influencers yeah. to put good To influence. be responsible, to be yeah. responsible. And that's a really good point there because, you know, just to point out that so much social media is, it's a stage. It's a stage of life that people are creating to create the vision of what they want other people to view them as being. Mm -hmm. But many times the image that's being portrayed isn't actually how they're feeling. And I'm sure as many people as you speak with, and yourself, myself, we want to put out pictures that you know look good and we look happy and don't have us like, oh, I'm so exhausted and I'm just, oh, I'm so tired of being tired and all of those things. But we wouldn't dare do that because we want to inspire a good, happy life. So how are you, how are you, how do you feel like the image that people see of you is different from how you're feeling? Like, how would you try to course correct what people might think to give them compassion for where they are? I'm very real, Liz. I show myself, I, I think maybe that is, the secret, I can connect with people because I try just to, I, I don't use social media as a showcase for a fake reality. I show myself vulnerable and real like everybody else. I may feel not the best some days, but I'm always positive because I face adversity since I was a kid. So everything is just plus, plus for me. And I, it's a plus, it's in a life and in a great country. 
with great opportunities. I'm happier, every day happier and happier because I realize that I'm not paying a penny to be here with you, alive, breathing. My eyes can see, I open my eyes, I smell, look at this like, hello, mm. so many reasons. So I, it's hard for, I don't have, I, I cannot say that I don't have bad days, but I'm pretty happy person. You're a pretty yeah. happy person. Yeah, I, I, you are. And I'm not you, telling you that I don't have problems, like everyone, mm. we all have, I mean, it's life. But I don't let those problems to... Weight you down. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the master, know the circumstances. Good for you. I don't react, I don't let the circumstances to take control of my mood and my feelings. Rachel and I talk a lot uh, in our book about, Nick, like, we're the driver of the train of our life. And sometimes we get back in the caboose, in the train, and that train is like a runaway train, like our mind starts to take us down these, you know, tributaries that don't support us and bring us down and don't make us feel good. And we say, hey, you're the one driving the train. Mm -hmm. You, Liz, get back in the driver's seat and you start to drive where you want to go because you're the only one that can take you there. And so that's really, really powerful advice that you don't let that mind or negativity or things that are happening on a daily basis bring you down. Okay. They take you down for the moment, but you get back. You get back on your horse, you get back in the driver's seat and you drive where you want to go. Another thing about beauty, and we were talking about comparison and how that can be so damaging. Rachel and I had, when we wrote our book, Get Radical, we were really dreading the chapter about beauty. I love that chapter. You do? Yeah, I love that chapter. And that is one of the reasons I love Radical. I love you girls. Because the way you are approaching, you are reframing beauty. Mm. is beautiful. Oh, thank <laughs> it's beautiful. you. And it's really important because it's, it's from inner, inside, it's from feeling. It's not only your appearance from the outside. Yeah. So that is really important. I'm glad you liked that yeah, chapter. That was one I of the saw, hardest yeah. ones for us to write it's because we were like, beauty. beauty. <laughs> I don't know how we even got in skincare, for God's sakes. We just, you know, created the, the solution for our skin and decided what good are we on the planet if we don't share it with others. And so when we were writing about beauty, it was kind of like, that isn't really the point. So then we said, okay, let's just start interviewing everybody out there and say, what's beauty to you? What does it mean to you? And exactly how we felt, they felt as well. It wasn't, you know, if she was blonde and 5'8 and 112 and wearing, you know, Dior or this or that or Versace. No. Oh, it was the light in her eyes. It was how she would laugh. It was that when I, she can't do enough for people. It was her giving nature. It was her authenticity. It's how raw she is, allows me to be really me. I mean, all of those things. When you say show up. What do you mean when you like? It's how for she you shows show up, up for a human that. being. So it's like when you walk in the room, you show up as this raw, excited, interested that's person, that's right? Really and so that was a really powerful process for us to get the awareness in the process of writing that people, what we sometimes think is beautiful and what we're comparing our beauty to, in fact, most people are more moved by who we are, not what we wear, mm -hmm. not what we do, and not where we live. Also wonderful things to aspire to, but it isn't what makes us beautiful. It is, and um, that is a powerful chapter. Well, we're so happy to have you get radical with us, and you've been a sister on a mission for a while now. We first met at the wellness retreat that we had, the Radical Wellness Retreat, and we just connected right off. And I think it was because of the authentic sharing that we had and the fact that you've used whatever challenges that you've had to support, help, and inspire other people on a daily basis. I'm so glad I went to that retreat. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're having beautiful. more of them. We're having many more of them. And I can't uh, wait to have you as one of the radical mentors that help other people, including myself, on our journey to always be better yeah. every day. We like, like sisters. sisters. We, we, we help, help each other. We, yeah, that's, that's right. And that's what we say, sisters on a mission. It's not Rachel and I that are biologically sisters. We're all sisters and misters on a mission to make a radical difference. 
And so, I'm going to give you a billboard. And I'd like to know what you, what word is it that you live by, that you'd like to put up in lights for everyone to see and to remind themselves to take that to heart? My word is resilience. Because you only lose when you stop trying, first of all. So I, I won't never stop, never stop to pursue what turns your soul on fire, like what makes you feel alive. So stay resilient and maybe as well compassion. Mm. Those two mix, I would like to mix those two words because we, we need more compassion in this world. So as you know, we only uh, package our skincare with self-care. So every time we use our skincare, we want it to remind us of a, of a moment, a radical moment to anchor our goals. So when you're using that eye cream, we want everyone to take a moment to actually, not only is it gonna deal with puffiness and dark circles and hydration and wrinkles, that leave the lines to us, we've got that. But we want you to use that moment to actually anchor down the visualization of what is it you really want in your life. See it like a movie in your mind where you can see it and you can feel it. That's beautiful. Inside. So if we can use radical skincare and the steps of creating our beauty, if we can turn that into mindful moments, so our eye cream is using it to visualize like a movie in our mind what we really want. Feel it, get, the, get into the emotion, and anchor that morning and night when you're using it. The exfoliating, the, uh, the enzyme peel, which literally in minutes removes that dead skin. You can see it right before your very eyes. We want you to use that moment to remove the fear, the doubt, the worry, and the self-criticism. It's a ritual. It's, it's a beautiful. ritual. And so we have to keep on it. And we have to keep that palette in our life clean and clear so we can keep creating. Consistency. Every day. Just like every you did. Night. You were consistent in no, what you did and you ended up at the end of your journey looking in a mirror and going, I don't even know when that happened. Exactly. And so it's just the process of consistency. And then finally, we've got our Rejuva Firm Beauty Oil. And you're right, hydrate with gratitude. So when you're okay. using that and your skin is soaking it in, you take five things, name five things that day that you're grateful for and start to train your brain to look for the good and not the bad. And that will help in radically uplifting you and let your, let your radical glow come through. So that is really exciting. So what we're going to do is uh, offer today a $100 gift certificate for those that go, that have enjoyed this podcast and want to go and share with us, ask questions, tell us how it impacted you, what you learned, and we'll be choosing at the end of this week. Yay. A, another radical sister and mister on, the, on a mission to share a hundred dollars worth a gift from you to them to get radical in a life they That's love. Amazing! Thank mm. you. Thank you so much for coming. We, we need to share radical beauty with the world, with we our do. sisters. We do, and you do just that. And I want to congratulate you girls for this podcast. This is something that we need. We need powerful, beautiful women from inside to outside to keep our youngest generation inspired. Well, thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you, you for doing this. You inspire me. Thank you for coming out today because uh, you're, the, you're one of our founding ambassadors in the beginning of our journey in this circle of, uh, circle of love that we're really excited to share. So we look forward to seeing you next time and hear more of Diana's Radical Secrets. So it was amazing when Diana walked off the set, the crew and everyone just said, oh my gosh, you know, you just exude positive energy. And I feel the same way when I spend time with her and she has this most amazing smile that just draws you in and everything that she has to say about it being the journey 
and also about how we have self-awareness about ourselves and how we can have that nagging voice inside of our heads trying to compare ourselves to other people that are out there that are, you know, they're fitter than us, they look better, they, we like their legs better, we like, oh my gosh, their hair's better, I need to lose 10 pounds. We're constantly in that comparison mode and especially in what she's been doing in the world of fitness. But really that message of having self-awareness and having self-kindness and how we look at ourselves and seeing the beauty in everyone and seeing the beauty in ourselves. So I really got so much out of everything that she had to say and hopefully you guys did too. Um, we would love for you to make a comment below and uh, Tell us how this has inspired you, or if you have a story that you can that you're saying, "Oh my gosh, I completely relate to that." We really want to hear from you. This is really about uh, radical stories, radical inspiration. If you're hearing this podcast today, or maybe you're hearing it, you know, a month from now, every week we are picking from people that are making comments. If you go into Instagram and share with us what inspired you with one of our podcasts, we're going to pick a winner. Uh, that will receive a hundred dollar credit and we'll be able to go on to RadicalSkincare.com and have a radical shopping spree. So please do come and check us out at Instagram. Give us your uh, inspirational story or a comment on one of our uh, podcasts and you'll be entered into winning a hundred dollar credit that will uh, give you the ability to go on to RadicalSkincare.com and have a radical shopping spree.